So we're going to do the same thing with this horse. This horse has been off for a very extended period of time. I think I sat on him about a year ago for about five minutes and that was the extent of the work that he's had. He came in last week, he did a bit of long reining, trotted around the round pen, he was very good. So they do remember this foundation training for a long time. But I don't just want to jump on him and find out how he's feeling on board. I want to find out how he's feeling right here with me on the ground and him doing the work around me. Yeah, it's very wet. So, so we've got some fresh long rains, but they're going to be wet quite soon. So we'll talk a little bit about one of the drawbacks of long raining is that you can't give an immediate release. And that's why I like short raining after long raining because you get a much better release. It's much more like you're actually on the horse. The release, of course, is even worse if the rains are wet, which these are going to be in a minute, or it's very windy because you've got that wind resistance. So it's just something worth bearing in mind. So what I find is I love long raining, as you probably know, but I do think it's got its drawbacks. We need to be aware of that. Nothing's perfect. But so if you're aware of the drawbacks, it doesn't make your horse lighter in the bridle. Yeah. If your horse already understands give to the bit, shoulder control helps, your horse will be light in the bridle. After you long rein it, it's going to be heavier in the bridle. Simply because, no, I don't want you to roll. Simply because I don't have an immediate release. So if he does the right thing and I release, it has to travel all the way down the reins before it re uh, reaches him. And it also, I've got the weight of the reins. So he's got sort of constant, very light, but constant pressure just from the weight of the reins, even when I don't have any rein tension. So that's a drawback. And it's the reason why every time I finish long reining, I do a bit of give to the bit work in hand or short reining because I think that that just helps remind the horse to stay off the bridle and not to expect a sort of continuous contact and get the horse to understand that if he stays in self-carriage, then there's nothing. He's, he can be as light as he likes as long as he maintains his posture. And walk. Again, I think we took last time we had this horse out, so the neighbors on three sides of us and us all treated their cattle for fly in the same week. And the following week, all the fly came and sat on my horses and ate them all up. And some of them were much worse affected than others. Jazzy, you can see, is looking like a bit of a leopard at the moment. He was very badly impacted. So it's one of those things, you can't wait till everything's perfect. You just gotta get on and make a start. And I always think that, you know, if you're bringing a horse back to work and you're nervous about it or anything, just, just go out and do five minutes on the ground with the horse. Lead it up and down the, the road or, you know, bring it in, put its bridle on, do a bit of give to the bit. Five minutes, you're gonna find, hey, that was actually quite good and that was easy and it was fun and the horse enjoyed it, nothing went wrong. And then we build on that. It's all about building. You know, once you start with your goal, you always end in a wreck. So our goal today is to sit on this horse, not ride him around particularly, just maybe have a sit on him, do a couple of circles. That's the goal, but we've got a pathway to get there. And if we fail at any of these different things we have to do to get there, then we just postpone that goal till next time. So our pathway is long reining first, so long reining, I want him to be able to go walk, trot, canter, maintain posture through the transitions. And I want to be asking myself those three questions, those two questions, can I ride it? And do I want to ride it? And can I ride it? I can definitely ride this. And he hasn't done anything yet for me to answer no to the second question, do I want to? But if he started throwing his head around or, you know, changing gait when he wasn't asked, then I'd say, no, I don't want to ride it. I don't want to ride it till he's focused better on me, till he's concentrating. So pop him into canter and watch his posture during the transition. Good. Ah. Good. 
Tanto. And trot. Good. Okay, so Jazzy is has much more woe than go, does Jazz. So keeping him going in the canter is always going to be difficult, especially on the long range and a long way away from him. So what I was trying to do there was I kept asking him to canter so that I had an opportunity to bring him out of canter by cueing him to trot. So we'll try that again. And trot. Good boy, good boy, that was better. So we're just going to build on that. I'm not going to expect him to counter six circles today. I expect him to counter maybe half a circle. Oh, we'll walk, walk. We'll change direction and walk. Walk. I didn't ask for that, so I'm going to bring him back to walk. And then I'll ask him to trot. Good boy. So when you've got a horse that's a bit insensitive to the cues, you want to use them less. So if, you're, if you want your horse to habituate to something, get used to it, ignore it, then use it more. So think about if we want to habituate the horse to the saddlecloth, for example. We're going to flap it around the horse. We're going to make a lot of movements with the saddlecloth. So it's using it a lot until the horse doesn't respond anymore. So the horse will do exactly the same with verbal signals. If I keep clucking at him when he's trotting, he'll just ignore it. So when I get on board, he'll, he'll ignore me on board as well. And I've lost that really useful signal. If I want him to go faster in the trot, I'll give him a signal. Yeah. But I'll stop it when he goes faster. If he makes the mistake of slowing down, I'll give him the same signal. Good boy, good boy. And steady. And still trot. Good boy. So if I'm asking him to trot, I keep that clucking sound. I slow it down if I want him to trot faster, so I go. Good. And you can see there, he's reaching out a bit more, he's making steps a bit longer. Good boy. Steady. Uh, uh, trot. Good boy. So for canter, I'm going to kiss. And if I want him to canter faster, I'm going to kiss. Good boy, and walk. Okay, for walk, if I want him to walk faster, I use just a single cluck. So we've got clucks for walk and trot, and the kiss for canter, only canter. It's all it means in my world. You can have whatever cue you want, but I think you're better off having something that you don't use for anything else. So if I want the horse to come to me, I whistle. If I want the horse to trot, I cluck. Steady, steady. And canter. Oh boy. And faster. And trot. Oh boy. Good. And walk. And you can see Jazz has been enjoying the grass. So he's hugely fat. So that's it for long reining because I'm going to run out of horse very quickly. I don't want to do that because I still want to have enough between the ears for me to have a sit on him and him not just to be tired, therefore not react. So that was good. He did everything I wanted. And the answer to both those questions, can I ride it? And do I want to, was a big yes for Jazzy.